Okay, uh, let's look at the theorem 5. Uh, perpendicular line from an external point. Right? So uh, it, sa it says this. Uh, if uh, A is a point outside of the line L, so it's an ex external point, then there exists a unique line M such that the line goes through A and also line M is perpendicular to given line L. Right? So I'm going to postpone the uh, uniqueness part, but the, I'm going to focus on the uh, uh, existing part, right? So basically, we want to um, um, show you how to construct it, right? So uh, let's uh, start with the given. So A is not is is a point outside of the line L, right? All right, number two. So we know that uh, there are a couple of points. Uh, let's say uh, B and C on the line L uh, such that uh, they're distinct so B and the C are not the same point right so uh, we can say that maybe we can just quote the axiom uh, incidence axiom I5 uh, uh, line for a uh, part 4 right so this is by I5 part 4 because line has to have at least two points right so we can just place a point uh, any any two points so here's uh, here's a B um, B here and I'm gonna put a, a C there right and then you can kinda look at that uh, you know triangle here so triangle A B C all right, so here's the construction. So we can construct a D uh, down here so that the angle, or maybe I'll do it here. So construct the D such that the angle here uh, would be congruent to angle there maybe I'll do this right so uh, how do we justify that three we know that uh, there exists uh, a D uh, such that right uh, we know that the angle uh, DBC is congruent to angle ABC All right, so this is by angle construction theorem. So in a way, we actually construct a ray uh, BD, right, uh, such that the angle is the same. So this is can be justified by uh, angle uh, construction theorem, All right? Then. Um, and also, uh, we want to make sure that the D is the same length, so we can just kind of move the D around or cut the um, cut the ray short so that uh, BD and AB are the same. So uh, maybe yes, I should say BD uh, equals um, BA. Well, AB doesn't matter. So this is the uh, segment uh, construction theorem. Right, but uh, uh, if you feel um, like being lazy, uh, we can probably combine these two uh, angle construction theorem and uh, uh, cons uh, segment construction theorem. We can just say by construction theorem, All right? So that we don't have to specify which one. And uh, we have. I'm gonna actually make it two lines here, right? Such that. All right, so uh, so we have that. Then what we want to do is we're gonna establish the congruence. Uh, let's see first that we have to look at. Uh, let's see. So by construction, we know that uh, this guy right here is congruent to that guy. All right, and then we know that uh, let's see, BC uh, five 
uh, segment BC is of course congruent to segment BC itself so this is uh, by reflexivity All right then six All right so we got that oops we got that all right then therefore uh, we have a side angle size so triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC all right so we have so we have a triangle here and uh, these are the uh, two triangles we're looking at all right, so then, uh, so this is by side angle, oops, side here. All right, side uh, here, let's say AB equal DB, so by, uh, maybe I should say, uh, yeah, that's uh, by construction, so line number four. All right, angle there is also by construction, so it's angle uh, number three. And side is using the reflexivity, so line number five. All right so then we can say all right we can also say that the here um, AC and DC are congruent so AC is equal to DC this since they are corresponding parts of congruent figures all right then uh, we can uh, probably quote uh, the perpendicular bisector problem since uh, B and C are equidistant from uh, D and A from from D and from A so we know that the here uh, uh, 8 therefore there exists M and I'm gonna use uh, M equal a D so this is the line we're looking for so line is going to go through A and D. All right? So this is going to be line AD. All right? And so there exists such that, all right? By definition, uh, M is going to contain A. So A is in uh, this M. And and M is perpendicular to L because of the uh, so it's uh, uh, let's see L is going to be the perpendicular bisector of segment AD so we we know that by uh, perpendicular bisector theorem so I'm using that fact that uh, let's see B is equidistant from A from A and D and C is equidistant from A and D so we have uh, I'm using that and uh, let's see line number four and line number seven and I'm using a perpendicular bisector there to show that the M and L are perpendicular All right that's it I hope that uh, this was clear